Yeah, Drifter has a few bugs. Squashing as many as I can is all I've been working on the last couple of weeks. Most of the bugs I tackled had trivial solutions. To stop seeing over the wing and walls, the walls were just made higher. To stop the skid marks disappearing on game over, I just set the lifetime to infinite after crashing. To hide confetti from the car thumbnail, I stopped rendering that layer to the texture. You get the idea. Some bugs though, required a bit more thinking. Unfortunately for those who are making the most of the infinite points on the wangan, that bug, or feature depending on your perspective, has been removed. This was done by finding how far the car has driven along the road and only awarding points if the distance travelled is the largest it's been in the run so far. Each road piece has a handful of nodes that define a rough centre line. Using this, the piece can be divided into sections. By finding the section the car is in, and how far through it it is, the distance through the entire piece can be found. This, with the track piece number, is used to calculate the total distance travelled. I've made the code for this public on GitHub and linked in the description. There's a sample Unity scene to show how it works, but at its core it's just a C-sharp class. There were also some issues with the road generation, despite the mammoth effort I just spent on it. Very occasionally, the road on the dock and the Indusso would overlap. The root cause was simply not looking ahead enough when checking section validity. However, I didn't want to increase this yet due to the terrible performance of this algorithm as explained in the recent road generation video. I ended up making the generator smarter when an overlap was about to occur. Now, when the road controller knows that the next piece will overlap with another regardless of what piece is chosen, it just waits. And to help debug issues with the road generator in the future, I made the generation depend only upon an initial random seed. The seeds are logged so they can be found in the error logs. A seemingly trivial bug was the high score bonus being applied twice. Once before the game over UI showed up, and again when the stage was quit or restarted. While I could have just checked that it was only applied once for a given run, it was actually a symptom of a much bigger problem. See, at the end of a run, calculations and updates need to happen, like applying bonuses, the coin counter being updated, potentially a high score being saved and uploaded, and updating the UI elements on the game over screen. This was previously done in a nasty hodgepodge manner, with no way of keeping track of what has and hasn't been done, and thus what the initial and updated values were. So, I created the run summary. The starter container holds all the useful bits needed for post-game scripts, like coins earned, high score bonus, and the new and old high score for the stage. It's to act as a source of truth when it comes to post-game information. So, for the double high score bonus bug, the inventory updates were changed to make use of the run summary, only allowing them to be applied once. And finally, to better debug issues, I've integrated Firebase Crashlytics into Drifto, allowing me to get more details of what's actually going wrong. So, no new features yet, just a better working game. You can check out the now less buggy Drifto on the App Store and the Play Store. And if you want to talk about feature ideas or yell at me about more bugs, come join the Drifto Discord server. I'm also posting more frequent updates about development there. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next devlog.